Hi, my name is JD Youngblood. I'm here at Cedar Creek Church with my good friend. Oh, microphone's in the way. Matt Howder. He plays drums as well on the weekends. We are going to teach you how to simply set up an SPDS, roll an SPDS to control Ableton. To, we'll teach you how to mini map. Um, it's really simple, so let's go through it. So, things you need is SPDS, um, and one of these, uh, it's basically MIDI to USB. Uh, also, Roland makes one, this is an M Audio one, they're probably about uh, 40 bucks or so, depending on where you get it. Um, and obviously Ableton and a laptop. But, but anyways, here's the steps. All you do, you go to the background here. Here's the back of SPDS. You want to pay attention to these two ports over here. That's the MIDI in and out. If you look closely on here, uh, each one of these says to MIDI in, to MIDI out. So you obviously put MIDI out here, MIDI out here. So we'll do that again. So MIDI out. These things are always hard to get in at first. Uh, okay. And okay. And then on the other end, you plug into either, I have a USB hub because I have a bunch of USB stuff plugged up, but you just plug it to the side. So the first step's what you do. Um, first you gotta check for either a Roland or M-Audio uh, driver. We'll post links up on the YouTube page for this video showing you where it is. Download those, install them, do whatever you have to do. Then you open up Ableton. And the next steps is um, make a MIDI track. Go down, create, insert MIDI track. Um, label it. I'll just label it SPDS for now. Don't mind any other stuff. You know what? I'll just get rid of it. have one SPDS. Then you go to uh, go to your settings and your preferences and file. You know, what am I talking about? I don't even know where I always do the keyboard shortcut command comma. It's the easiest way to go about things. Keyboard shortcuts. Then you go to MIDI sync and here's where it gets tricky. Um, you look for you look up here, right now I have a bunch of stuff set up for a weekend. If I have used it, I have some things I don't, like MPK MIDI I don't use, so we'll get rid of this. Um, you honestly don't have to worry about a control service because it's not on there. You just select input, MIDI interface, output, MIDI interface. Then you go down to MIDI ports, see USB Uno. Make sure track and remote is on. Same with output. Tracks on and remotes on. Got it. You're done there. So now, what should happen, you should get signal. If you look at this top right corner, this little square up here, see it's flashing right by the D. So that means we're getting something. We are getting signal. I'm hitting the pad. And things are happening. Now. Um, let me create a little scenario. Let me insert a track, an audio track. We will go in here and we will we will put in Find a backtrack. Out of there. 
get a weekend Easter service. We got a post jam. Sweet. Make sure the audio is coming out. Close. All right, we're good. Um, don't forget if you are actually you don't have to do that. So let's we'll say we're playing the song opener, um, and I want to cue. I want to launch this clip or this backtrack from my SPDS. First of all, you have nine pads on a SPDS, so you can choose whatever you want. Um, so let's just start with one. One's up here on the rim. Um, so you click MIDI. Everything in blue means you can um, MIDI map. So you have nine pads here on SPDS. You can MIDI map nine different things, or anything that's blue right here. So let's, I want to MIDI map this opener clip, this master clip right here, because that will launch the audio to clip over here. So I just click it, make sure it's selected, hit one, and you see a 10, da or a 10 backslash C3 showed up. That's the note number for the pad, because technically in MIDI world, each one of these pads is a different note on like a keyboard. So it's 10 C3 is what it's programmed to be. And then on the left at MIDI mappings window, it'll show up, it says master scene one. That's scene one in the master path. So then you got that set. You unclick MIDI and we'll give this a go. Give me a stick just so it's more official. And there it goes. Now it plays, but Instead of reaching back over to your lap, your laptop or whatever, push spacebar to stop it. Let's create a stop button. Um, I already have a stop button selected for something else. Um, let me get rid of these so you can see them. So I have two stop buttons here on Ableton. Uh, it's kind of confusing at first when I saw it. I was like, why are there two stop buttons? Just have one. Um, this one down here, if you open up your little hints box, it's this little uh, arrow at the bottom left. If you drag your mouse over anything, it'll tell you everything about it. So you click over here on this square, it says stop all clips button. Um, so it'll stop any clips that are currently playing recording using that current global quantization. So that'll pretty much stop all the clips on any track that's here. It won't stop the master um, sequence. So usually what I do and what you can do is I'll program one pad but with e with uh, both stop buttons. So I'll select that one. I'll push this number nine because it's the farthest away from my scene so I don't accidentally hit one. So I'll do that one. I'll do this other stop, make sure it's selected. All right, they show up. You got master stop clips and transport stop. Now the cool thing is, let me unselect everything. So first song comes up in service, boom. We are rolling, we are rolling. All of a sudden, a guitarist or a singer misses a lyric and you're off the click. So what do you do? Push number nine, because that's stop on stops. You're done. That's that simple. Um, and then afterward, you could label each pad. Usually I'll use like a bright gaff tape or something like that. So I could, you know, I could easily see what pad it is. And like, like I'll, I'll usually put like a square on here to sign you know, signify stop or whatever. Whatever it is you want to do, it makes it easy for you. So, um, but yeah, that's it. Um, and obviously make sure to save it once you're done. If you don't save it, you obviously got to redo all of that work. So, that's all there is to it. Matt, what do you think? Is that good? It's pretty good. That's awesome. He's just sitting over here, just listening to me rant for 15 minutes. But yeah, so hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box. Uh, thank you again. Goodbye.